You're calling me a coward? No. I am calling you defeated, Trevor Belmont. You fought your battle, and you decided you lost. Imagine having your entire family wiped out before you hit puberty. An entire country betraying you all at once. Ostracized by the very people you swore to protect and defend. This is the story of Trevor Belmont. A man who was born into a castle and part of a family lineage that stretched back hundreds of years. But spent most of his life sleeping under trees and living in complete solitude. It's a story of a man who was consumed by intense resentment and rage towards a world that had turned its back on him, but overcame this by rediscovering his sense of identity. He went from a miserable drunk to a hero who quite literally stared death itself in the face and beat it down. Welcome to the library, a digital syllabus for champions. My name is Donnie, and today I will be dissecting the backstory, character arcs, and psychology of Trevor Belmont, the last monster hunter. Castlevania, in a lot of ways, is a story about people finding purpose through harsh times. In a world where there are vampires, night creatures, sorcerers, and corrupt priests, the only way to endure through it all, it seems, is to have a strong mission that you are trying to accomplish. Something to give meaning to the madness. For Dracula, it was the complete annihilation of the species that had killed the one woman he loved. For Alucard, it was preventing his father from committing genocide. For Carmilla, it was power. But for Trevor Belmont, purpose was something that had no place in his life at the start of the show. Trevor is the last surviving member of the Belmont family. The Belmonts? You're a Belmont. We should have killed all the Belmonts. We'll need someone to fight for us. Yeah. A family who were the most powerful monster hunters, a bloodline of elite killers that could defend the country of Wallachia against any supernatural threat. But when the church came into power, they convinced the people of Wallachia that the Belmont family was demonic and were tapping into evil forces to be able to fight against magical creatures. So, the beautiful castle that Trevor had spent his childhood in was destroyed, and he was left alone at the tender age of 13, the last member of his ancient bloodline. The perfect word to describe how Trevor was at the start of his arc is defeated. As I said before, Trevor was angry. Angry at a world that had betrayed him, the people that had abandoned him, and a life that he had to live alone. He never had any friends, only had a family for the beginning part of his life, and spent his life fighting monsters and stumbling into bars, only to get thrown out as soon as they learned what his name was. Still, however, Trevor had a desire to help people and to do good. Maybe it was a genetic thing. He wasn't really good at anything besides fighting, so when the speakers needed help fighting a monster, Trevor helped them in order to save them. This is when he met Cypher, the woman who would give him his first taste of purpose. Who are you? Trevor Belmont. I'm Cypher Velades. After saving her, he demanded that her and her people flee the city. They disagreed. Trevor was angered by this. He didn't see the point in saving a city full of people that despised people like him, and the speakers, but they did. That is when the main speaker told Trevor that he was defeated. Ever since his family had been banished, his people abolished, Trevor had given up on the people of Wallachia. He was born to be a fighter, and fighting was pretty much all he was good at. So when the church decided that they didn't want him fighting for the people, he lost his entire identity, his entire purpose. But the speakers managed to convince him to be who he was born to be, one last time. Many of you have probably experienced what it is to be truly defeated. To know what it is to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right, but to fail all the same. I know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail nonetheless. Trevor had that feeling his whole life until he became friends with Cypher and Alucard, a vampire of all people. Can manage not to kill each other while I'm gone. Oh please, we're not children. He shouldn't die. Yes, fuck you. Through his time spent with Alucard and Cypher, Trevor discovered for the first time in his life what it is to have companions, to have partners. People who you can count on and who count on you. Dracula taught a human woman how to be a doctor. <laughs> what was first? Bloodletting. <laughs> God, you still think you're funny. Even though him and Alucard hated each other at the start, on account of their families being ancient rivals, they grew to respect and even care for one another. 
I'm disturbed to find that I had more of a childhood than you did. And your dad's fucking Dracula. What? <laughs> <laughs> he also began to care for Cypher, someone who was the polar opposite to Trevor. Treffy? Oh my god, no. You are Treffy now. Don't. <laughs> Trevor is descended from royalty and grew up in a castle. Cypher is a nomad and grew up sleeping in tents and wagons. Trevor lived most of his life alone. Cypher spent all of her life surrounded by over a dozen people that were a part of her culture. So at first, Trevor misunderstands Cypher's loneliness, but she perfectly understands how sad and miserable the monster hunter is. I'm not really sad. All the time. You don't even notice it now. It's just how you are. Trevor had been at rock bottom for so long that he forgot what it was like to even be happy and have any sort of joy in his life. His life was a series of fights, lonely nights sleeping under trees, and a lot of drinking. And that man there has beer. At the end of season two, Cypher asks Trevor to travel with her. Trevor himself says that Cypher is the closest thing that he's ever had to a friend and is happy, but also shocked that she wants him to be with her. They set off and have many adventures together, sleeping in a wagon and fighting against magical creatures of all sorts. This is when Trevor and Cypher become extremely close. Cypher, do you have my back? And despite the fact that Cypher is always complaining about how rude Trevor is. Trevor! What? I have something! Uh, when I say what, that doesn't mean I would like to ask even more questions. Would you please? Oh, you're the most annoying. Just... And Trevor is always annoyed with her. They fall in love with each other. For the first time in his life, Trevor asks himself, What the hell am I doing with my life? What the hell are you doing with your life? And then what? A pretty girl holds your hand and takes you to bed and all of a sudden... And all of a sudden your world changes. Up until now, his life has been simple. Fight monsters, get a drink and try to stay out of people's way. But now he actually has someone in his life that cares about him. For the first time in his life, he has something to lose. That is better than sex. Better than sex? D different. Differently good. Really? They shot on a farm, Cypher, and their ship was on fire. Burning devil goat turds from the sky. Trevor still hasn't found his purpose, however, but he has found his identity. In all honesty, he was just following Cypher around, and every time she would ask him what he wanted to do, he always had the same answer. Oh, what's next? Don't know. Mm. Castlevania is a story about finding purpose through harsh times and Trevor would find his purpose in the finale. After saving the world from genocide, again, Trevor faces off against the one foe we will all surrender to eventually, Death himself. We're just killers out of history. It's time for us to go. And who's going to make me go? You? In this moment and this moment alone, Belmont realizes who he is, who he's always been and what he has to do. He sacrifices himself to beat death and save everyone else from having to suffer the genocide that would have happened. Trevor Belmont is not a polymorph like Dracula, a mage like Cypher, or a man of wisdom and class like Alucard. He is a big, barbaric fighter who was born to do one thing and one thing alone, slay monsters of any kind. He realizes this and finally fulfills his true purpose. If you are struggling with the same thing, or at a stage of life where you feel like you are defeated and at rock bottom. You probably won't meet an Alucard or a Cypher, but what you can do is ask yourself an important question. Who am I and what am I put here to do? By finding purpose and meaning within the harsh times of life, you can persevere and conquer through anything that stands in your way. Thank you for watching. I know you will make it through this.